Genesis chapter 12 and buckle your seatbelt. I'm telling you, this is going to be a ride. Luke chapter 4 and Genesis chapter 12, we've been talking about eliminating poverty and financial lack, not just encouraging people struggling with finances. Listen, this study that we are on is not intended to encourage you. It's not intended just to make you feel a little better. This is intended to make a change in your economic status. And it's not because God wants us to fall prey to the love of money or greed. Those are things he warns against. God does not want material things to have you. But he always wants to bless his people with material things for the purpose of us stewarding those in a proper way for his kingdom and for our own enjoyment. And that's in the Bible. But I've got something so good to share with you today. We're going to start a new phase of eliminating poverty and financial lack. This, let's call this volume two. Volume two. And I'm telling you, this is going to be a good ride. You think one was good? Mm-mm-mm. This is going to straighten up some things and bring blessing to your life. But it starts inside. How many of you know change outside starts inside? God has to get it through you so he could get it to you. So let's receive today, Luke chapter 4 and Genesis 12. Let's start in Luke chapter 4. And I'd like us all all to read the 18th and 19th verses of Luke chapter 4. We'll read uh, out, out loud as usual from the New King James Version. If you don't have that translation, that's okay. But just as we read it aloud, follow along on the screens if you would. Everybody together, Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. Let's all read loudly and together. Let's go. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Let's stop there. Hold your place in Genesis 12 because we're going to be by there shortly. Now, eliminating poverty and financial lack, and the title today is this, the rest of the gospel. The rest of the gospel. Let me tell you, we've been hearing the gospel, some of us, for many years. But the Lord is saying, you need to hear the rest of the gospel. And we have not been preaching the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. And today the Lord wants to show you so clearly in the Bible, I mean all over the Bible, that the gospel, the good news that God brings to humanity is more than just that Jesus saves us from sin. Yeah, that's the most important thing. How many of you know that's the most important thing? Amen. And so we focused on that. And if we're going to focus on one, that's the one we ought to focus on. But I want you to remember, Jesus focused on all of it. And he said right here, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And the first thing he mentioned is that I'm anointed to preach the good news to the poor. That's not the most important, but that's the first thing he said. Why? Because that's a felt need of everybody. That's a felt need. And God has a way of meeting us right where we hurt. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He doesn't require us to get born again to begin to experience his blessing. If we'll believe something that he says, he'll begin to give it to us right then. How many of you know many of the people that Jesus healed, they weren't really believers in everything that he taught about the kingdom of God, but they believed they could be healed. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Why do you think they give all those samples at Costco? Man, they want to give you a little taste, and then they want you to come back and buy the box. Isn't that right? And you know you can't buy a little box at Costco. Isn't that right? You're going to get the big pack. And that's what the Lord says. The Lord's saying, taste this. And if you like that, i got a big pack for you. I've got a lot of blessing for you. Well, Jesus started off here, the gospel to the poor. And we've studied this, that Jesus believes that the preaching of the whole gospel will eliminate poverty in people's lives. Just like healing will cause somebody that's lame to go from not being lame. How many of you know there's more than one way of being lame, though? Isn't that right? You can be healed and still be lame, right? You can go from being blind to seeing. I just read a testimony this week 
of uh, blind eyes that were healed. Bam, the guy started screaming, screaming and yelling. Everybody's going, what's going on? The guy's eyes popped open. The guy's eyes popped open in a service that somebody was preaching. I'm telling you, these things are real. But Jesus said, listen, I'm anointed to preach good news to the poor. And he clearly says in this passage, and we also studied in chapter 7, you know, a few weeks ago, that the gospel to the poor is the answer to their problems. It will change their financial situation. Now, today I want to talk about the rest of the gospel. The rest of the gospel. Now, Paul said in Romans 1.16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. So Paul, like Jesus, believes that the preaching of the gospel is the very power that changes things in people's lives. That salvation, if you look up that word, you'll find out it's not just talking about being born again. It's talking about delivering you from whatever is oppressing you. And so Jesus believes that the gospel will change it in your life. Paul believes that the gospel is the power that will deliver you. And listen to this. Jesus went all about preaching the gospel. So he preached the gospel to the poor. But what we forget is, no, he went and did that everywhere. For example, in Matthew 4, 23, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues. Listen, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. So how many of you know when it says he was preaching the gospel all over the place, that that gospel included the gospel to the poor? Isn't that right? The gospel to the poor. It says the same thing in Matthew 9, 35. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, listen, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. A lot of people think that Jesus just went around healing people. That's not true. The first thing he did was teach and preach. He was a teacher and a preacher, and the teaching and the preaching of the gospel brought faith to people's hearts so that they could reach out and receive healing and deliverance, so that they could reach out and receive it. And so Jesus was a teacher, and Jesus was a preacher. And so when he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, we can readily see that Jesus went all over preaching that gospel. In other words, people that were poor, people that were struggling financially, were getting this message that had the power to change that in their lives. And Jesus intentionally went about to bring that and said, I'm anointed to bring this. Now, So what I shared with you is Jesus went all about teaching the gospel. But I want to drive one more point home under that. He didn't just go all around preaching the gospel or a gospel. He went around preaching and teaching that Luke message. The message from Luke chapter 4. That specific message where he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That specific message is what Jesus taught everywhere. I didn't realize that for many years. But let me show it to you. It's from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. And Peter's telling the story. And of course, how many of you know, Peter was, uh, from what we could tell, maybe he and Andrew, the first disciples that Jesus called to follow him. And so Peter was with him in his whole ministry. And so Peter's reporting here, and in Acts 10, 36, Peter says, The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace, notice this, through Jesus Christ. So who is the preacher? Jesus was. Not preaching peace about Jesus, preaching peace through Jesus. So God was preaching through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all, verse 37. That word you know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, that's the southern part of Israel, and began from Galilee, that's the northern part of Israel, after the baptism which John preached. And then in verse 38, Peter tells us what message that was that Jesus preached all up and down the land of Israel. Here's the message, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. So Peter is saying 
Let me tell you, in fact, he's telling all these people, well, you guys know what Jesus preached all over the place, all over Judea. He began from up in Galilee, and he preached this everywhere. He preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit. So Peter's telling us that that Luke 4 message that began there in Nazareth, in Galilee, Nazareth is up in the Galilee region, he said that message is what Jesus went about all of Israel and preached. So what does that tell us? That tells us that Jesus was going around everywhere saying, hey, you need to know the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. That's the first point of this message, that he's anointed to bring good news to the poor. Did you hear me? So that meant, listen to me, See, some people say, well, you know what, that, this is just an American gospel. That, this, that's so wrong. When I get a chance, I'm going to tell you testimonies of missionaries. You know what we found out from missionaries? Missionaries get it to work better overseas than we do here. You know why? People have too many options here. They got, you know, Jehovah Visa and all that. They've got too many other ways of getting blessed. But you know, when you're on the mission field over there, you don't have any way to get it. Some of these people are, are going to die if God doesn't come through. And so, man, they grab hold of this gospel, and the power of God goes into operation. I'm telling you, it worked better over there than it does over here. I'm praying that some of the revival and miracles that are happening out on the foreign fields will start to happen in America. The power of God's moving over there. Now, listen. He preached this message all over. This is what I was going to say. A lot of people say, oh, yeah, we shouldn't focus on that. Jesus preached this everywhere he went. That's what Peter said. Man, he took that right there, how God anointed him. Well, what's the first thing he said he was anointed to do? He said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And we know from that passage in chapter 7 that he fully intended that gospel to solve the problem of poverty. That's how powerful this word is. Jesus went to preach it because he was bringing this gospel to change people, to change people. And so I want you to see right off the bat, I'm going to close this whole thing out, coming back to the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I wanted you to see right off the bat that according to Peter and according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus went about to tell people, you don't have to be poor anymore. I've got some good news for you. You've got a father who loves you. And he owns everything. And you remember in Matthew chapter 6, he said, listen, listen. If your father feeds the birds of the world every day, how much more value are you than the birds? Isn't that what he preached? He's trying to tell them, don't worry. God's going to take care of you. Seek the kingdom of God. He'll add it to you. Isn't that what Jesus preached? See, we know these things, but we have to remember he went and preached those. Listen, here's what the Lord has ministered to me. We haven't been preaching it like Jesus did. Jesus went all over and he's telling people, telling people. But in our society, because we've had a few preachers that have compromised with finances, and they have. I don't believe it's the majority, but there have been too many. Well, then masses of people use that as an excuse to say, I don't want to hear about all that. Well, you know what? There are multitudes of people struggling because churches and ministers have pulled back on what Jesus preached. Man, this is part of the gospel. This is part of the salvation that Jesus has brought to our lives that we don't have to struggle like everybody else. We got a God who loves us. Anything we need, he'll help us. Isn't that right? And this is what Jesus went and preached everywhere. All right, now listen, listen. The gospel to the poor is not a different gospel that's talking about money. It's the same gospel. It's the gospel. It's the gospel that Jesus came and died for your sins and gave you his righteousness free of charge. You couldn't earn it. It's a free gift, the free gift of righteousness. And now with that righteousness, you can come boldly into the throne of grace and obtain whatever you need. Isn't that what Hebrews says? See, so it's the gospel that gives you the right to come in and to receive from God. It's the same gospel. It's not something just talking about finances. It's all part of the package. Jesus came to get us in the family. And how many of you know, when you're in the right family, you have an inheritance. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with who? 
with Christ, with Christ. Amen. Did you ever read in the, the Gospels that Jesus was hungry and uh, he just couldn't find anything to eat? So he almost died. Malnourished? No. Only time you see that Jesus was hungry is when he was fasting. Did you hear me? But even when, they, even when the disciples said, send the multitude away, he said, no, give him something to eat. How many of you know? He's got, he's got something up his sleeve. It's called, I'm in the family of God. There is no lack in this family. See, we got to get this. This is what Jesus lived. This is what Jesus preached. That's why he didn't have to hoard money. Because there's no lack. You only hoard if you're afraid there's a lack. Amen. If you're afraid a lack is coming, you'll have to hoard it. But if you know, oh no, tomorrow, oh yeah, God's got that taken care of. Then you don't have to, you can just do whatever God tells you to do today. Amen. Give us this day our what? See, this is what Jesus taught and this is what Jesus lived. But we need to preach the rest of the gospel. The rest of it. All right, now listen. Provision is just a part of the gospel. This is what I want to show you today. Provision is just a part of the gospel and it's been that way since the beginning. For example, when Adam and Eve sinned, how many of you, how many of you know before Adam and Eve sinned? There was no lack. But once they sinned, what happened? All of a sudden, there's a lack. And, and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves. All of a sudden, ah, the glory of God's gone, right? And now they're trying to sew fig leaves. Can you imagine sewing fig leaves? How good is that going to work? I mean, one run through the jungle, that's gone. Isn't that right? Ah, Adam! Isn't that right? Well, listen, listen. <laughs> Don't picture that. <laughs> that, that, happened, that happened in chapter 3. That's when, that's when they sinned in chapter 3. Listen, in the same chapter, in the same chapter, chapter 3 of Genesis, the 21st verse, it says, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. This is the first time we see any death in the Bible. God went and killed some animals and took their skins and clothed Adam and Eve. What does that say? It says two big things. Number one, even though you sinned, I want to provide for you. Talk about the gospel from the very beginning in the same chapter. The same chapter. And not only that, what does it also say? You're more important to me than the animals. Yes, I feed the birds of the world every day, but how much more am I going to take care of you? This gospel has been since the beginning of this book. All right, now listen. I told you to go to Genesis 12. Isn't that right? Look at Genesis 12, because in Genesis 12, God comes to preach the gospel, good news to Abram. You remember Abram's name was later changed to Abraham. But it says in Genesis 12, 1, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. What's God saying? I'm going to give you some land, Abram. Number two, I will make you a great nation. How many of you know that's a blessing? That's good news. I will bless you. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. How many of you know God is preaching something to Abram and telling him, I want to bless your life. I want to bless your life. If you'll do what I tell you to do, leave where you are now. I've got a new place for you. How many of you know you have to let go so God can bless you? You have to let go and do what God tells you to do so that God can bless you. And so God comes and preaches the gospel just like we preach the gospel to anybody and they have to let go of their lifestyle. They have to let go of sin. They have to let go of anything that's not pleasing to the Lord and they have to follow the Lord. But the gospel is, if you do, God will bless you. Isn't that right? From the very beginning, he's preaching to Abraham, saying, listen, I want to bless you. Now, in chapter 12, the same chapter, look at verse 10. Now there was a famine in the land, and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. So there was a famine, and he went where? 
to Egypt. How many of you know in the Bible, Egypt, now I'm not talking about modern day Egypt, in the Bible, Egypt is a type of sin and the world system. Egypt is a type of sin in the world system. In fact, when God brought his people Israel out of Egypt and into the promised land, that is the biggest picture in the Bible, intentionally by God, of us coming out of sin and coming into salvation through Jesus. How many of you wave at me and say, you knew that already? Okay, that's not something new. Okay, that, everybody knows that. Every, every scholar that I've ever heard agrees with that. The exodus from Egypt is the biggest picture. It's the most repeated story in the Bible. That exodus out of Egypt and eventually getting into Canaan land is the number one type or picture or shadow of the Old Testament about us being saved through Jesus in the New Testament. Okay, now listen. This is 400 years before that whole thing, about 430 years before that whole thing takes place with their father Abraham. And notice Abraham finds himself in Egypt with a famine. Now look at the 14th verse. So it was when Abram came into Egypt that the Egyptians saw the woman, that she was very beautiful. That's his wife, Sarai, whose name was later changed to Sarah. The princes of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh. And the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. He treated Abram well for her sake. He had sheep, oxen, male donkeys, male and female servants, female donkeys and camels. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarai, Abram's wife. Now here's something for whatever reason, I had never correlated and the Lord helped me to understand. This scenario is a type and shadow of what's going to happen 430 years later with the children of Israel. Notice, there was a famine 430 years later. And God raised up somebody into Pharaoh's house named Joseph. And for Joseph's sake, God ended up blessing all the descendants of Abraham by 70 people. You remember this? Anybody? And they were all blessed and taken care of and received the land of Goshen. And there's... They were supplied from the king's provision, from Pharaoh's provision, because of Joseph. But then at the end of that, what happened? Pharaoh, the Pharaoh got plagued. Isn't that right? When that whole thing was done, the Pharaoh got plagued, and God brought him out. Now, I want you to notice, this is happening 430 years before they came out of Egypt, and now uh, Sarai is the, the one playing the part of Joseph. She's taken into Pharaoh's house, and for Sarai's sake, Pharaoh's loading Abraham up. Or his name's Abram still. Loading Abram up and blessing him. But then what happens? Then at the end of that, because Pharaoh, you know, he had her, he had Abram's wife, and God had already told Abram, I'll curse him who curses you. Well, Pharaoh didn't even know it was his wife. But how many of you know, whether he knows or not, he's messing with my man down there. See, you got it. Listen, when you come under this blessing of Abraham, people better watch when they mess with you. Amen? Not because you're bad, but because you're in covenant with God. Amen? Now listen. The Lord plagued Pharaoh's house. He plagued. That's a, that's a type of something to come, isn't it? 430 years later. And notice this. He plagued his house. Now, now look at chapter 13, verse 1. Then Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him to the south. Notice the words, and all that he had. Verse 2, Abram was very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Now I want you to notice here with Abram. He's coming out of Egypt, but notice he's not coming out of Egypt empty-handed. Did you hear me? This is a type and shadow of the gospel. He's coming out of Egypt loaded up with livestock and silver and gold. And we know a bunch of that he got from Pharaoh for Sarai's sake. That's what we just read. Isn't that right? So how many of you can see this is the first exodus? And in the first exodus which is also a type of our salvation. He didn't just get delivered from Egypt. 
he came out blessed. Anybody seen this? What I'm telling you is that what Jesus was preaching was not a new gospel. Jesus was just preaching the original message that God had been trying to bring all along. All of this is types and shadows of what Jesus was going to bring to us. So Jesus is just preaching it the way it is in the scriptures. We haven't been doing that. And the Lord's saying to us, you need to start preaching the rest of the gospel. People need to hear the rest of the gospel because the rest of the gospel, that's part of the gospel. The rest of the gospel will deliver people from financial poverty and lack. The rest of it. All right, now look at this. Let me break this whole thing down for you. Here's the picture of the gospel from this story. Egypt is sin in the world. I told you that. Pharaoh is Satan because Pharaoh is over that Egyptian system and Satan is the God of this world. He's over this world system. The plagues are God's judgment on Satan, sin, and the world system. Freedom that they got from leaving Egypt is the type of salvation. And the wealth that they came out of Egypt with is God's provision, which is just a part of the salvation that God brings. It's just a part of it. It's a part of it. So this was the first exodus. But notice this. In chapter 15, look there. Chapter 15, God preaches the gospel again to Abraham. Now, not about himself, but now about his descendants and about this event that's going to take place some 400 years later. Look at chapter 15, the 13th verse. It says, Then God said to Abram, Know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and they will afflict them 400 years and also the nation whom they serve I will judge. Afterward, they will come out with what? Notice, it's, it's another 400 plus years before it even happens. But notice God's preaching the gospel saying, and when I bring them out, I said, when I bring them out, what? I'm going to bring them out with what? Great possess. Whose idea is that? Is that Abraham saying, Lord, when they come out, you think maybe they could have a couple of bucks? Whose idea is this? this I'm telling you, this is the gospel. This is part of the story. We hadn't been preaching this. And that's why so many people that are believers are struggling because they don't realize, no, this is God's idea. He's the one wanting to get you out from under that financial pressure and lack and poverty and get you over into a different place. And it's been his idea. It didn't start with Jesus. It started way back here in the beginning. All right, now look. Look. It says here in this passage, the people are afflicted. God judges the world. He delivers the people. And he says, I'm going to bring them out. That's salvation. But he says, I'm going to bring them out with great possession. So the deliverance of God has always, from the beginning of the Bible, included provision from Adam and Eve, from Abraham, from the children of Israel. And God is declaring this in advance. What is that in advance declaration called? It's called the gospel. He preaches it in advance so that when the time comes, you can take part, partake of it and receive. Amen. That's the way the system works. All right, let's, let's just play this story out now. So God tells Abraham, one day your descendants are going to be in the land. They're going to be afflicted 400 years, but I'm going to judge that nation. I'm going to bring them out and they're going to come out with great possessions. So he preaches that 430 years in advance. All right. Now let's go to Exodus chapter 3. Since it's close. Now this is with Moses. And God's talking to Moses and telling him to go get his people out. And here's what it says in Exodus 3 verses 7 and 8. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Verse 8. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. So when we call out to God, does he save us? What did Paul say in Romans? He said, uh, Romans, I believe it's 10, 13. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Notice that's not new. That's way back here. The Lord said, I, I've heard my people call and I came down to deliver them. How many of you know that's the gospel? 
But listen, listen, he's not done yet. He's telling Moses, I've heard my people cry out and I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Listen, and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land. What is he saying? I'm going to give you some land. Amen. He's preaching the gospel. He's telling Moses. Now listen, Moses has a long road ahead of him to get back to Egypt. Because he's way out on the backside of the desert. But how many of you know God's saying, let me tell you what I'm going to do. My people called. I'm going to deliver them. And not only am I going to deliver them, but I, I got a large land I'm going to give them. Not lease it to them. Not rent it to them. Not mortgage it to them. I'm going to give it to them. Amen. Is this part of the gospel? All right. Listen. To a land flowing with milk and honey. What does that mean? Their businesses are going to flourish. To the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. All right. Now, look down at verse 19. Exodus 3, 19. But I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not even by a mighty hand. So, here's what I'm going to do. I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my wonders. And I will do in its midst, uh, which I will do in its midst. And after that, he will let you go. Verse 21, and I will give the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty handed. Is this part of the gospel he's preaching? I mean, Moses hadn't even made it back to Egypt yet. And God saying, let me tell you something too. When I deliver, now, now Exodus, that's a type of salvation. Is this true? But I want you to notice what God is preaching that, it, that is included in salvation. When I bring them out, it's not just going to be deliverance from being slaves. And I've got land for them. Listen, here it is. Look at this. Verse 21, And I will give the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall be when you go that you shall not go empty-handed, verse 22, but every woman shall ask of her neighbor, namely of her who dwells near her house, articles of silver, articles of gold, and clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters, so you shall plunder the Egyptian. What does plunder mean? Strip them. Clean them out, isn't that right? Plunder them. Plunder them. Hey, uh, you know that, ne that necklace you got? That, yeah, the big, the big gold medallion? Yeah, yeah. Can I, can, can I have that? Can I? And, and the Lord said, I'm going to give you favor with them. And they're going to say, yeah, take it, but just go. Take it. Just go. Go. Here. Here's all our gold. Here's all our silver. Hey, you know that suit that you got at Nordstrom? Man, I like that. That's nice. Take it. Take it. You want it? Take it. Here, I got some new underwear, too. Take it with you. I, I mean, well, I, I'm elaborating a little bit here. But how many of you know, that's what it says. You're going to plunder them. You're going to walk out blessed. Yesterday, you were slaves. Yesterday, you were under hard bondage, being beaten, had an unreasonable load on you. But today, did you hear me? This is what the Lord said. But today... You're going to plant, you're going to, all those people, you're going to be blessed with all their stuff. Now, listen, I'm not telling you, don't get the idea that we're going to walk around and say, yeah, you give me your stuff. No, 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 no. That whole entitlement mentality that everybody around has, that everybody else is supposed to take care of me, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the Lord doing this. We're not talking about putting pressure on people. Notice the Lord said, I'm going to give you favor with people. He didn't say you're going to twist their arm and yell at them and say, I deserve to be. No, 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 no. He said, just lean over the fence and say, hey, um, you, you have any goals? <laughs> and he said, I'm going to give you favor. And they're going to say, yes, if you'll leave, we'll just give it to you. Leave, leave. Why? Because the judgment had come to Egypt. See, you didn't have to do it. God did it. God did it. But see, this is the gospel. He's telling Moses, this is what I want to do. When I save them, I want to bless them as well. Is this the Bible? All right, now look. 
look, come down now to, uh, and by the way, oh, I can't skip this. Look at the end of verse 22. It's not just for you. It's for your children. The clothing, and you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters. Put them on your sons. God said, I don't only, only want to bless you. I want to bless your children. I want to bless your family. Some of you, the Lord wants to bless you so you can bless your mother. So you can bless your father or your sister or your brother. How many of you know, I will bless you and you'll be a blessing. How many of you have family members that you'd like to bless? Come on. We need to, if you don't want to receive the gospel for yourself, receive it for other people who need it. Amen. Amen. There are people who need this. This is part of the word. All right, look at chapter 11. Did it actually happen? Let's see. Let's go all the way up until... There's one plague left. Chapter 11, verse 1. And the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. Afterward, he will let you go from here. When he lets you go, he will surely drive you out. Drive, so they had cars. He will drive you. No, no, that's, I know that's not what that means. But that means, listen. That means you're not going to have to convince him anymore. He's going to say, yes, go now, go now, go now. Well, I was hoping to have a little bit of gold. Take it, take it, take it. This is what God said. God said, I'm going to do that. You're not going to have to pressure anymore. No more pressure. Listen. He said he'll drive you out uh, of here altogether. Verse 2, listen. Speak now in the hearing of the people and let every man ask from his neighbor and every woman from her neighbor articles of silver and articles of gold and the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians moreover the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people now listen somebody said well didn't we already read this no no back on the back side of the desert well let's start back God said to Abraham 430 years ago One day your descendants are going to be under some hard bondage and they're going to call to me and I'm going to save them. And when I do, it's not just going to be deliverance from slavery. I'm going to send them out with plenty. And then when it got right up to it, the children of Israel cried out to God and God came to Moses. Hey, listen, I've heard the cry of my people in Israel. They're calling for their covenant God. And so I'm going to bless them. I want you to go get them out of there. And when I bring them out, I'm going to bring them out with great possession. See, God keeps preaching this gospel, okay? Now they get over there. Pharaoh says, no, plague, 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 plague. Nine plagues come. And then just before the last plague, God said, now I need to talk to you now because when this one happens, they're going to tell you to get out quick. They're not going to wait until the morning. They're going to drive you out. Why? Because they're scared. They're destroyed. And I'm going to give you a favor. But God says, but let me just remind you, don't forget about what I've already said twice. Let me just remind you, don't forget to.